welcome to the course compiler design in this lecture we will discuss about uh, loops in flow graphs so in our previous lecture we discussed about uh, various uh, principal sources of uh, code optimization there we covered the techniques uh, related to function preserving transformation so which are uh, applicable to basic blocks so either local or globally so then um, later we discussed some of the techniques related to loop optimization also so now with continuation we will see more about uh, loops in flow graph even in code generation during basic blocks and flow graph there little bit we discussed about loops now here we will discuss some more details about uh, loops in flow graphs so here mainly loops in flow graph that we know so how to represent then uh, here first we will start with uh, one important uh, term dominators so that means with respect to node in a flow graph so when you can say one node dominates other nodes like that in the flow graph so we say node d of a flow graph dominates node n that can be written as d dom n so the order the first node d second node n d dom n means so the node d dominates node n first node dominates second node when this is possible here yeah, the condition is if every path from the initial node suppose initial node other than d and n so if every path from the initial node of the flow graph to n suppose here let us assume p is the initial now you are having node d node n so now when you can say d dominates n so here if every path from the initial node every path from the initial node of the flow graph to n so that is p to n goes through d so it goes through compulsory it won't go directly to n uh, it it goes to via d so then you can say the node d dominates n that is the condition simple rule so from initial node in the flow graph it will go to the destination node through or via whatever the node we are considering d then you can say d dominates n suppose n goes to d then from p to it may be a loop then n dominates d like that the same sequence you can follow that is called as dominator under this definition every node dominates itself so by default every node dominates itself like uh, epsilon closure of a state in uh, automata theory so for a state if no transition labeled with epsilon then epsilon closure of that state is the same state itself in the similar fashion every node in the flow graph it dominates itself and the entry of a loop dominates all nodes in the loop so whenever there is entry of a loop which dominates all nodes in the loop so that is the concept of dominators so now let us start with one example flow graph so consider the following flow graph shown below with initial node is 1 so here one is uh, initial node so now here we need to find out uh, the dominators for all these nodes so here uh, various loops are there so here one is the initial node we are having loops that is 4 to 3 4 2 is there then uh, we are having uh, 7 to 4 is there then we are having 8 to 3 is there then we are having 9 to 1 these are all the various uh, loops are there so now here uh, domination can be defined as per the above definition so by default every node dominate itself so then a particular node suppose 3 dominates 4 means it must uh, start with initial node 1 it goes to 4 via 3 so then it dominates 4 uh, like that so like that now let us see one by one so here what are the va variable various possible uh, dominators so the initial node dominates every node that is the default one now node 2 
dominates only itself. The reason, let us see here. So node two dominates only node two itself. The reason is, so here we are having two possibilities. So it has to start with initial node, then it has to go to three. So then compulsory it goes via two only. Then only we can say two dominates three. But here we are having direct path also, one, two, three. So here there is no guarantee to, uh, to go via two. That's why we can't assure why it will go every time two, maybe occasionally. So every time it is not possible. So we'll consider the domination only for every time mandatorily it goes to via that particular node. So then only we can say that node is dominate. Now we can see here. So node two dominates only itself since control can reach any other node along a path that begins one, two, three. So that begins here. One, two, three. That's why we can't assure every time it will go via two. That's why two dominates only the node itself. Now let us take three, node three. Now node three dominates which nodes? So if you can take four, if you can take five, you can take six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Compulsory. So from the initial node, it has to go via three only. It has to go via three only to reach either four or five or six or seven and so on. Therefore, three dominates, three dominates, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All nodes, except one, two. Except one, two means one, two, one is initial. Uh, only, it concerns only the outgoing, outgoing nodes from that. So incoming nodes by default, uh, Already visitor means those won't be considered from three to outgoing, including loops also. So now here three dominates all except one and two. Then similarly, now let us see here. Node three dominates all but one and two. So previously already verified. Similarly, node four. Let us see node four here. Node four dominates. So it won't consider previous nodes, one, two, three. So anyway, previously already dominators are defined means then it will consider only next new nodes now four to let us see four to five you can take six you can take seven you can take eight you can take nine you can take ten you can take so every node from initial node compulsory it goes through four only from four onwards anyway the node four dominates itself now it dominates uh, all except one two three now five six seven eight nine ten then uh, similarly five you can see here five and six we can't assure every time from initial node one two five or two six so here directly we can't assure every time the path will go via five or via six here two alternatives are there that's why here these nodes dominates only self that's why here you can see node five and node six dominates only themselves since the flow of control can can skip around either by going through the other. That's why five and six. Then seven, you can take seven. We are having only one outgoing. So compulsory, every path from initial node, compulsory, it meets through seven. So seven dominates eight, nine, ten, except one, two, three, four, five, six. Then similarly, eight, eight also, you're having. Uh, two possibilities. So eight dominates itself. Then nine and 10, these are all individual. So dominates themselves. So like that, we have to find uh, dominators. Then uh, similarly, seven dominates, we already mentioned. Seven dominates. Every time you can include the node itself also. Here, eight, nine, 10. Sometimes you may include seven also. Here, sometimes you may include four also. Why? Because the self is by default. Seven dominates, eight, nine, ten. Then nine and ten dominates only themselves. So nine and ten dominates only themselves. So like that, we have to find dominators for each and every node in the flow graph. Now these dominators can be represented in the form of a tree. That tree is called as dominator tree. So dominator tree, a useful way of presenting dominator information 
is in a tree called the dominated tree in which the initial node is the root and each node d dominates only its descendants in the tree so this is the final condition so why because descendants means uh, outgoing after d whatever the nodes those are called as descendant nodes so now the initial node we can assume it as a root node then each node d dominates only its descendants now from the above dominators let us see the dominator tree dominator tree for the flow graph of the above flow graph so is shown below now here you can see one dominates all by default so that's why all nodes connected uh, from one why because uh, this is the initial node also now this is the root now one to two uh, one to three next one three four wherever any path you can consider starting from one compulsory it goes uh, it start from one only so by default one dominates all then uh, we already mentioned two dominates only self so no descendants for node two no descendants then three dominates all except one two that's why from three two so three to four then again four to all descendants then um, from four to here let us see here in the above four dominates all but one two three except one two three so here you can see the possible paths one two three four then uh, one three four so four dominates all then uh, coming to five six seven here you can see five six five six dominates only themselves whereas seven dominates eight nine ten so that's why here five six separately we are connected to node four now we can see five six then seven also we have separated and connected directly to the four why because five and six no descendants these are all dominated by self only but seven dominates eight nine ten so that's how we have taken direct path from four two now seven dominates all eight nine ten then eight dominates nine and ten then nine and ten no dominators themselves they dominate so this is the dominated tree now with this now you can take the paths so dominated tree for the above flow graph so like that we can represent the dominate information in the form of a tree that is called as dominator now the existence of dominated tree follows from a property of dominators each node and has a unique immediate dominator m that is the last dominator of n on any path from the initial node to n so whenever any node having immediate uh, dominator in terms of dominator relation the immediate dominator m has the property that if d not equal to n and d dominates n then d dominates m so this is what immediate uh, dominator so now in loops other kind of loops natural loops so like in a database uh, we are having relational database join so natural join inner join outer join left uh, like various types of joins are there similar to that in loops also natural loop how to define the natural loop even for this we are having one algorithm also so one important application of dominator information is in determining the loops of a flow graph suitable for improvement there are two essential properties of such loops a loop must have single entry point called the header this entry point dominates all nodes in the loop or it would not be the sole entry to the loop that is the first condition then second condition there must be at least one way to iterate the loop that is at least one path back to the header coming back to the header the first one we are considering at the header then at least one way to iterate the loop that is one path coming back to the header then that uh, in that path whatever the edges that we will call as back edges a good way to find all the loops in a flow graph is to search for edges in the flow graph whose heads dominate their tails so your head and tail two terms how to define with respect to domination let us see it if a derives b is an edge a derives b now the right hand side b is called as head left hand side a is called as tail so now a derives b means b is the head a is the tail we call such edges as back edges 
how to define back edges a to a derives b b is the head then a is the tail then this edge is called as back edges that means this edge is connected to the header going back okay now in the previous flow graph what we consider initially there is an edge 7 to 4 now let us see go back and check so now from the original flow graph now you can see there is an edge that means loop 7 to 4 here we are having 74 one edge now 4 is head 7 is tail now with respect to dominators how to define this back edge now here you can see for a domination this can be written in reverse order so back edge is represented uh, the last one to previous one that last right hand side will call it as head left hand side will call it as tail then the domination can be represented as head to tail now four domination seven now seven to four back edge means four four domination seven similarly ten to seven an edge is there then seven dominates ten the other edges with this property are 4 to 3, 8 to 3, and 9 to 1. Now, 4 to 3, 3 dominates 4. Then 8 to 3, 3 dominates 8. Then 9 to 1, 1 dominates 9. So the dominators can be written in the reverse order. That is head to tail. Whereas back edge is represented tail to head. So that means coming back to the header this point you can remember so note that these are all exactly the edges that one would think of as forming loops in the flow group now that is the concept of natural loop then how to define the definition of natural loop given a back edge n to d we define the natural loop of the edge to be d plus the set of nodes that can reach n without going through D. So whatever the nodes that can reach N without going through D, then node D is the header of the loop. At that time, we can say node D is header of the loop. This is the definition of natural loop. Now let us consider the natural loop of the edge 10 to 7 consists of nodes. So in this uh, path 7, 8, 10, since 8 and 10 are all those nodes that can reach 10 without going through 7. You can go back and uh, check. So the nodes 8 and 10 are all the nodes that can reach 10 without going 7. Now 10 to 7, you can check it once. Here you can see 10 to 7. So the nodes from here you can see 8 to 10 or 8 to 9. So it will go directly to the 9 or 10 without going to through 7. So like that, uh, that is called as the back edge. Now 10 to 7 is the back edge. 10 to 7 is back edge. That means 7 dominates 10 as for the back edge definition. So the natural loop without going through seven, it has to reach to other nodes. That is called as natural loop. Now here you can see the same is shown here. So the natural loop of the edge 10 to seven consists of the nodes seven, eight, 10. Since eight and 10 are all the nodes that can reach 10 without going seven, directly eight to 10 or 10 itself self. So the natural loop of 9 to 1, same in the entire flow graph. So the natural loop of 9 to 1, 1 is the initial node, so then 9. So entire flow graph. Here, don't forget the path 10 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 9 with uh, back edges. Now there is one algorithm for constructing the natural loop. Algorithm for constructing the natural loop. The algorithm name is constructing the natural loop of a back edge. What is the input to this algorithm? A flow graph G and a back edge N to D. These are all the required information. Then what is the output? The set loop which consisting of all nodes in the natural loop of N to D. 
So all nodes in the natural loop of N to D, whatever the back edge now, that is the natural loop here, all nodes are included in that loop. Then the method beginning with node N. So we have to start with node N. We consider each node, another node M not equal to D that we know is in loop. Then uh, to make sure that M's predecessors are also placed in loop, then the algorithm is given below. Each node in loop, except for D, well, because that is the back edge starting one, is placed once on a stack. So its predecessors will be examined. So like that, uh, the following algorithm is defined. Here one note, uh, because D is put in the loop initially, we never examine its predecessors and thus find only those nodes that reach N without going through D. In the above example, what we mentioned, the same. Now the procedure is given here, the algorithm. So whatever the concept we discuss, same is given in the form of a pseudocode. Procedure insert M. Then if M is not in the loop, then begin. Loop equal to loop union M. Then push M onto the stack, then end. Then main program follows here. Stack equal to empty, loop equal to D, then insert N. While stack is not empty, then do begin. Pop M, the first element of stack, of the stack. For each predecessor's P of M, do insert P, end, like that. Whatever the example we demonstrated, same is given in the procedure. This is the algorithm for uh, natural loop. So that is the natural loop. Then another kind of loop is called as inner loop. So we know inner loop, even in the core generation, basic uh, flow graphs and basic blocks, there we discussed inner loop. So if we use the natural loop as the loops, then we have the useful property that unless two loops have the same header, they are either disjoint or one is entirely contained the other that is nested with it. That means here uh, two or more nodes having the common header, you may call it as parent, then that is called as inner loop. Thus, uh, neglecting loops with the same header for the moment, we have a natural notation of inner loop. So one that contains no other loops. That means uh, inner loop, only one loop. Inside, uh, no other loops are included. Then that is called as inner loop. When two loops have the same header as shown below figure, it is hard to tell which is the inner loop. Now let us see it. The following diagram you can observe. Two loops with the same header. The first loop is uh, B2 to B0. Then uh, second loop, B3 to B0. Here you can see B0 is the header. The next loop also B0, same header. So two nodes having the same header. In this case, it is difficult to define the inner loop properly. Two loops with the same header. For example, if the test at the end of B1, that means here, where if A equal to 10, then go to B2. Probably the loop B0, B1, B3, B0, B1, B3, or sometimes B0, B1, B2 also. That's why here it is difficult to define the inner loop. So probably the loop B0, B1, B3 would be the inner loop. However, we could not be sure without A, detailed examination of the code. Perhaps A is almost always 10, and it is difficult to go around B0, B1, B2 also. This is B0, B1, B2 also. Loop may many times before branching to B3. So here two possibilities are there. Thus, we shall assume that when two natural loops have the same header, but neither is nested within the other, they are combined and treated as a single loop. Like that, we have to identify. So now, next one, pre-header. So already we discussed a header. Now, what is pre-header? Pre-header, several transformations require us to move statements before the header. We therefore begin treatment of a loop L by creating a new block called the pre-header. The pre-header has only the header as successor and all edges which formally entered the header of L from outside L instead, either the pre-header. Edges from inside loop L to the header 
or not change it. The arrangement is shown in the following figure. Let us see the first figure before preheader. What it contains only one header with uh, different loops are there. Then after uh, introducing preheader, now you can see one separate block is introduced. So that you can make it as the preheader. Then uh, it has only one successor that is header. So no other edges are connected to the preheader except its successor. Now preheader to successor, this edge is connected. Now from header to remaining all other nodes connected, even including loops. Here loops are included. So int introduction of the preheader. This is the re uh, arrangement. So initially the preheader is empty, but the transformations on L may place statements in it. This is the concept of preheader. So next one, reducible flow graphs. So how the flow graphs are reduced? That means uh, some loops you may minimize. Then automatically the flow graph is reduced. Exclusive use of structured flow of control statements, such as if then else while do continue break statements. So earlier also flow of control optimization, we discussed this conditional jumps, unconditional jumps. So flow of control statements, all these are all. If then else while do continue break statements produces programs whose flow graphs are always reducible. So even programs written using go to statements by programmers with no prior knowledge of structured program design are almost always reducible. So one of the most important property of reducible flow graph, namely that there are no jumps into the middle of the loops from outside. The only entry to a loop is through its header only. So like that, the flow graphs are reducible. Now, more uh, formally, how to define this one? A flow graph G is reducible if and only if we can partition the edges into two designed groups, often called the forward edges, not backward, forward edges and back edges. Both will be considered with the following two properties. The first property is the forward edges from an acyclic graph in which every node can be reached from the initial node of G. It's a cyclic graph. Then that is the forward edge. Then second property depends on back edge. So back edges consist only of edges whose heights dominates their tails. Now A to B. Now B is head, A is tail. So only whose heights dominate their tails. Heads dominates tails. This can be written as B dominates A. The same property what we covered above. Now the following flow graph is reducible. Starting of the loops in flow graph, we have considered this example with one to 10 nodes with various loops. So this uh, flow graph is reducible. In this figure, it is easy to check that if we are remove a five back edges, we already mentioned. So four to three, four to three is one back edge. Then uh, seven to four here, seven to four is second back edge. Then uh, eight to three. So here eight to three, this is another back edge. Then uh, nine to one is another back edge. Then uh, 10 to seven, here 10 to seven. So total five back edges. So if we remove the five back edges, whose heads dominate their tails, then the remaining graph is acyclic. Then we will get acyclic flow graph. So then the flow graph is reducible. So let us consider the flow graph shown in below figure one sample, which is non-reducible flow graph. So here we are having C 1 to 2, 2 to 3, then again 3 to 2, 2 to 1, then 1 to 3, 3 to 2, 2 to 3, 2 to 1. Here you can see 2 to 3, 3 to 2. This can be repeated any number of times, even 3 to 2, 2 to 3. That's why this is non-reducible. Whose initial node is 1? This flow graph has no back edges. No back edges are there. Since no head of an edge dominates the tail of that edge. Thus, it could only be reducible if the entire graph were acyclic. But since it is not acyclic, the flow graph is not reducible. So similarly, the reason this flow graph is not reducible because the cycle two to three can be entered at two different places. So nodes two and three, the cycle. It has a cycle. 
this can occur at two different places at nodes two and three if you can start with two two to three three to two if you can start three three to two two to three so because of this this flow graph is non reducible so the key the key property of reducible flow graphs for the loop analysis is that in such flow graphs every set of nodes that we would informally regard as a loop must contains a back head then only that is possible okay now that's all about uh, loops in flow graph our next concept before data flow analysis so two small concepts are there that we will discuss so later uh, we will discuss data flow analysis separately now you can see so our next concept is uh, constant propagation this is also one uh, small concept so earlier uh, we already mentioned copy propagation similar to that uh, constant propagation constant propagation is implemented using reaching definition analysis results whether that is reached or unreached that means liveness if all variables reaching definitions are the same assignment which assigns the same constant to the variable then the variable has a constant value and can be replaced with a constant this is called as constant propagation the copy propagation means simply copying whereas constant means every time the constant value is assigned now let us see the example variables that have constant values example c equal to 3 so later use of c can be replaced by the constant if no changes of c between now the following example before uh, constant propagation let us see here we are having b equal to 3 c equal to 1 plus b d equal to b plus c now here you can see in the second statement c equal to 1 plus b b we are having the constant is assigned 3 directly you can substitute in place of b as 3 so then this will becomes b equal to 3 c equal to 1 plus 3 now in place of b we used constant then d equal to again the b value 3 so 3 plus c even later uh, further step also if you can substitute uh, c value as 3 then in d you can substitute uh, 3 plus again c value only for uh, evaluation during evaluation only you can uh, simplify the expression as constant value but before evaluation you need to consider uh, the identifiers as it is so this is the constant propagation after here only 1 plus 3 b is replaced with 3 then another example let us see here uh, that is one basic block now by considering uh, one flow graph here uh, this is the initial block it has uh, two variables x equal to 1 y equal to 2 then uh, other blocks uh, no declarations are there then uh, we are having another block z equal to x plus y then finally a equal to z plus 1 here you can see z equal to x plus y the constant values taken from block 1 x and y are declared so x equal to 1 y equal to 2 these are all called as propagations then whenever you can substitute these values in this assignment statement in place of x and y so then you will get uh, the single constant value 1 plus 2 so here uh, z equal to x plus y x equal to 1 y equal to 2 now you will get 3 now this is called as the constant now this is called as folding by taking direct constant values to the identifies that is for copy propagation so then uh, simplifying the expression then by considering the value as constant then there is called as constant folding so this is the concept concept of copy constant propagation here now here z is 3 now this is the folding now this z value will be considered the propagation then the expression is simplified Here a equal to z plus one. Now z is three in the above. Three plus one, four. Now again this is folding. Now you can see folding will be obtained only after simplification of the expression. Then propagation by copying constant values to the variables are identified. That is the difference between copy propagation and uh, constant folding. So here use of variable replaced by a constant value. which is called as propagation expression is evaluated for folded if all of its operands are constants so here z is constant one anyway constant here x is 
the value one is constant y the value is two is constant so then only expression is evaluated for folding all of its operands are constant so this is the concept of constant propagation so next another concept partial redundancy elimination so this is part of common sub expression elimination so in various uh, loop as well as the local transformations optimization techniques common sub expression elimination we discuss now partial redundancy elimination is a compiler optimization that eliminates expressions that are redundant on some but not necessarily all paths through a program this is the partial redundancy elimination not in all programs so wherever it is required that's why this is called as partial redundancy elimination partial redundancy elimination is a form of common sub expression elimination so here also everything same only in particular blocks you can apply wherever it is required if in a block then there is the local common sub expression even outside of that block then there is global common sub expression elimination let us consider the following example the flow graph before common sub expression elimination here you can see we are having a equal to b plus c then uh, another block b equal to 7 d equal to b plus c here b plus c expression is repeated in two blocks so in the left side block and right side block whenever you can apply common sub expression elimination now we are introducing one temporary for b plus c now here t equal to b plus c then a equal to b plus c means the temporary now that is copied a equal to t then second block b equal to 7 again we have to take the same temporary t equal to b plus c now a uh, d equal to here d equal to t here now next block here again we are having b plus c now in place of b plus c we have taken common temporary t so e equal to t so this is the flow graph after applying common sub expression elimination so this is the concept of partial redundancy elimination it's a, it is nothing but common sub expression elimination only so but uh, this can be applied only some but not necessary all paths throughout the program okay now let us come to the summary of uh, this lecture what we discuss first we discuss loops in flow graphs then after that uh, constant propagation then uh, partial redundancy elimination so next lecture we will discuss about one important concept of the code optimization data flow analysis that is the last concept in uh, mission independent code optimization now i stop here